don't let these people who don't pay your bills judge how you live. Okay. Hi guys, it's Elena. And today we are talking about how to start saving with a low income. Regardless if you have a low income or not, these tips still can apply to you. So keep watching. So more than once I have heard, I don't have the money to save. I don't know how to save. I don't make enough money to save. And you may feel all of those things are true. But I'm here today to tell you that you can start saving even if you are not making a lot of money. You may have heard some different ways to save already, and I'm going to give you a few of those. But I'm actually going to give you some additional steps on how to save money. So let's just get into it. The first way that you can actually save money is by saving a percentage of your income. The goal is to save at least 10% of your income, but when you make a low income or you're just starting out with saving, 10% may seem like a lot. And guess what? Personal finance is personal. So you don't have to save 10%. Figure out the percentage that works for you. It can be 1%, it can be 3%, 5%, whatever. Decide what percentage of your income that you are going to save every time you get paid. And then I want you to go down to your payroll office or, or if you're able to do it online, I want you to change your direct deposit where at least that percentage is automatically transferred to a savings account. Okay? Automatically. I don't want you touching it. I don't want you in control of the process. So like I said, whether online or you can go down to your, your payroll department, go ahead and change your direct deposit where a certain percentage of your check automatically goes to saving. Now, if you do not have direct deposit, then I have another way for you to do it. So again, I really don't want your hand in it because sometimes when we have to physically move things, it does not happen. So if you don't have direct deposit, then I want you to set up an automatic transfer at your bank to transfer that percentage over to a savings account. Now you're gonna have to actually figure out the amount this way. So I don't know how much you get paid. I'm just gonna pick a general number and we're gonna roll with it. So let's say that your paycheck is $1,000, then you decide you're going to save 2% of every paycheck. Well then $20 needs to be set up to automatically transfer from your checking to whatever savings account that you have. It's going to transfer on payday. So if you don't have direct deposit, maybe you need to set it up like a couple of days later, but an automatic transfer needs to happen and that money needs to move from your checking to your savings. And we're not going to be like Kevin Hart here, like I ain't had time to move money from my checking to my savings or my savings to my checking, whatever. Have it move automatically so that you do not have to touch it. It's automatically going to happen. Once you have this happening on a regular basis and you're not dipping back into your savings to get it, you're going to see a difference. That account is going to grow. And as you are making more money and become more comfortable with saving money, then you can increase your percentage. Another way to start saving on a low income is to save an hour of your pay. So maybe you don't want to do the percentage method, but maybe you know how much you get paid an hour. I'm just going to keep rocking with this, uh, these two. So let's say $20 an hour. So every time you get paid, you're going to save $20. Now, I still want it automatic though. So direct deposit, automatic transfer for you, check it to the savings, one or the other. We are not touching this money, okay? You are making it happen without you touching it. And it should be pretty simple to figure out what you get paid an hour. Most people know what 
what they get paid an hour. If you are considered salary, you still can compute how much you are paid an hour. If you're struggling with determining how much you get paid an hour, if you get paid weekly, you're going to take the gross amount on your check stub and divide it by 40. If you get paid bi-weekly, so that's every two weeks, you're gonna take the gross amount on your check stub and divide it by 80. And also, I want to mention, we're not talking about working overtime or anything like that. This is if you're working full time, your check stub should show the number of hours that you work in. It really should show your hourly rate, but just in case, I want to make sure you know. And if you get paid semi-monthly, which means you get paid like the 15th and the end of the month, you divide your gross pay by 86.77. That's normally the number for twice a month. Another way to save is by doing the $5 challenge. If you haven't heard of the $5 challenge, it's been pretty popular. I've seen a lot of people save money doing this challenge. And basically they are saving every $5 bill that they have. So if you are a cash person, you always have a lot of cash, then this may work for you. Um, make sure you hide it somewhere where you're not going to dip into it. But every time you get a $5 bill, you're going to save that. And at the end of the year, you can decide where you want to put that. Um, I prefer for you to be shifting it on a regular basis into a savings account. But hey, do what works for you. As long as you're saving the money, I'm happy. Okay, and here's some other tips on how to make savings a lot easier and allow you to be able to save money on a low income. So the first thing that you really should do is create a budget or a spending plan. I will link two videos where I talk about creating a spending plan and a zero-based budget below. The reason why I'm telling you to create a budget is because you got to know where your money is going. If you don't know where your money is going, how are you going to be comfortable with actually saving it? So if you create a plan for your money and follow that plan, then you know, right? So make sure you do that first. Um, and also make sure you save first. Before anything else, we're saving first and then everything else comes after. Another great thing about creating that spending plan is that you're going to have all your bills and expenses listed. So you're able to see what you're actually paying for different things. How can you cut some of those items? Now, when I say cut items, I want you to cut some of the smaller items, but I also want you to look into cutting some of the larger items. Is there a way that you can reduce your car insurance or even your homeowners or renters insurance? Typically, if you have these insurances at the same company, they're already going to give you a multi-policy discount. Um, but do you have accurate insurance for what you need or... Um, is there somebody else that can provide the same thing for cheaper who's still a reputable company? Those are things to look into. So just to give you my own personal example, we had insurance with a particular company. I'm not going to mention who. They were a great company. I just really felt like we should have lower insurance, partly because we have really good credit. And a piece of your insurance is based on your credit worthiness. So I felt like we were being a little overcharged for what I expect for the age of our vehicles and um, the coverage that we had. So I actually did what I call an insurance search. I don't do this too often, but when I can, I will look at what we're be paying. I will take a look at what we're paying for insurance. And then I will start shopping around and seeing if there is somebody else who is going to charge lower for that same amount of insurance. I checked with several companies and I was able to actually save us $1,200 a year on insurance, which equals out to about $100 a month. So $100 a month can be really helpful for a lot of people. And that's a great way to kick off your savings account. Another expense that you can possibly look into cutting is your cable. That expense is typically um, one of your higher expenses behind um, housing, food, and your vehicle. So 
see if maybe you can possibly downgrade your plan or even um, just cut your plan temporarily until you are able to build up your savings. And there's just so many streaming services out there right now, especially with the streaming wars going on. You can really get the channels that you really want to watch for a cheaper price instead of paying for a whole package. Food. How can you cut your food expenses? That's one thing that you can look into cutting. Um, I've, also, I've mentioned before shopping your pantry. Um, and even one of the great ways to do is just shopping the sale items like deciding what you're gonna cook based off of what's on sale at the store and as far as your larger expenses um, the last one that I'm going to mention you know this one is you know I don't know how I feel about it I personally don't feel like everybody is able to cut their housing but if you are a couple ways that you can look into doing that is maybe look into downsizing, and possibly moving somewhere else that is a little bit cheaper or maybe moving in with a roommate or back home with a family. There's nothing wrong with moving back home with family. Don't let these people who don't pay your bills judge how you live, okay? Or you can just get a roommate, you know? You can see how you can possibly work that out. Like I said, I'm always up in the air about that because I just know everybody can't move. So this one, if it works for you, great. If you can't do it, then look for other ways to cut expenses and increase your savings. Another way that you can increase your savings is by selling unwanted items. We all have them. We have stuff around the house that we are no longer using and we can easily get rid of it. Um, so look, so look into getting rid of that stuff. It's great to declutter anyway. It makes you feel good. You don't have as much stuff around. So sell any unwanted items or clothes that you are not using. Another way to save on a low income is to save your windfalls. So if you get money from either a bonus or a tax return, then actually save some of that money. I'm not going to tell you to save all of it because I think for balance, we should spend some, save some. Um, so save some of that money and put it towards your savings. And that's a great little boost there. And one of the best ways to start saving on a low income is by getting a side hustle. As much as I like to talk about cutting expenses, the best way to save money is by bringing in more money. It's just what it is. So if you are good at something, then start monetizing it. There are plenty of side hustles out there that are available for you to do. Um, Anywhere, I mean, we know all of the regulars like Uber and Lyft, and I think it's called VO, but also there's Shipped, there's Instacart, there is Postmates, but there's so many ways that you can actually increase your income just using your normal skills and talents. And if even if you can find ways to increase your income that where you're not necessarily trading time for dollars, that's that's always best. So I hope that these tips actually help you. If you have questions about saving money or any comments, then drop them down in the comments below. Please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting on? Go ahead and hit the button. Yeah. And I will see you next week with a new video. Bye. Another way to start saving on a low in <laughs> how many hours you how many hours you work a week divided by the total amount of your check. But maybe you can shop sell. How can you how can how can you cut your food expenses? <laughs> <laughs> this is only second video. It should not be this way.